Now, finally, financial advice is available to anyone. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where I've noticed post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today, I'm joined by Paul Feeney. Hi, Paul. How are we doing? Yeah, pretty good. And I know you're just battling uh, with the remnants of COVID, so uh, we'll uh, we'll keep plugging away. But this is a really important conversation because there is, uh, you know, in the past, the idea of financial advice and financial planning was very much seen as the um, exclusive uh, high ground of those with uh, lots of money and lots of time to perhaps do it. But you've broken the back, I think, of a rather interesting alternative, which makes it much more accessible to many more people. Yeah, um, I suppose our quest is to uh, try and make uh, financial freedom available for everyone. I mean, let's face it, for, for a lot of people, money is the biggest form of stress for them. Um, and fair enough, because personal finance is confusing, complicated, and even intimidating for a lot of people. So we want to essentially make it available for every single person who's interested in improving their financial situation. Um, and it's technology, a digital delivery of financial advice that makes it uh, accessible to, to more Australians. Yeah, and this is what's so interesting, that effectively it is the harnessing of digital capabilities which creates the democratic access to something which previously was not accessible. But this is not quite the same as the sort of the t pretty typical robo-advice that's currently out there. This is a bit, a bit of a different philosophy, isn't it? It's broader and deeper. Yeah, when uh, the press is, is coined the term robo-advice, and, and really what you're referring to is an automated investment uh, machine. So online, you can go along and start investing and they'll manage your affairs and, and help you reach some goals and so forth that you're saving for or investing for. Um, but it's very much focused on that one little linear of how do you start investing, how do you manage it, and how do you build it on? Uh, for us, for most people, investing is just one part of their financial life that they need to control. So we've gone broader and we look at the four distinct pillars of, of what impacts someone's financial freedom and their financial level of stress. And that's around managing your debts, look at the savings that you've got going on, what's important to you. Then let's look at your retirement and also any investments that you may have. Project for what your retirement will look like. Are you likely to get the age pension from the government? And what's that going to do to the income in retirement? And then also what's your backup plan? What personal and general insurances should you have in place and to what level in case the unforeseen happens? You don't want the wheels and the bus to fall off and the rest of your plans to fall over. So we let you know how much you should have and how you go about sorting that out. And we just give advice uh, and recommendations and tips along the way to help people answer that one question that they all have. And that's, what do I need to do next? It's always a very um, important question, of course, because sometimes I think people put this sort of stuff off, right? You know, I'm too busy, the sun's shining, I'll get out of the beach. But this is a really important um, and, and frankly, you know, a decision that you take today can inf impact your long term future significantly. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and the whole thing with, with getting advice, it's, it is an intimidating thing. You're walking into the room where all the power sits with the advisor. You're not sure what they're going to do. And you're essentially standing there naked and say, hey, here's my financial life. Judge me. Give me a hand. I want to get better. Um, and that puts a lot of people off. But also cost puts a lot of people off as well. So once you start to put an individual in charge of the process, they can build out their plan just by answering questions about themselves and what their aspirations and what they want to do. The platform, Motivo, then starts to let you know, hey, with a little bit more information, we can give you advice on this. Or this is what you should do next with your money. Hey, increase the payments on your home and you'll save X number of years and X amount of interest to make you better off. Um, all the way through to putting more money into super and get sorting out your insurance as well. Right. So is it rules-based or, or, you know, artificially intelligence-driven? or I mean, what's, what's the secret source that actually makes this better than the typical robo-story? Yeah. Well, for one, we look at your entire financial life. We don't just look at investments. I mean, the first question when you start thinking about investing, like the robo-advice, should be, do you have any ongoing credit card debt or personal loans? Because you should take care of them first. So we look at the holistic per perspective of someone's financial life. And then essentially what we've done is, is like wealth management, it's not rocket science, but there's a lot of variables you have to take into account. And the rules of the game, the legislation is quite complicated. So we've built this monstrous decision tree. And then it basically can meet any client where they are right now. So every single person's situation is different. Where they are now and where they want to get to is going to be different. Um, 
But the beauty of Ativo is that we take your situation, i.e. your data, that tells us where you should be focusing. And then we expand other areas based on the answers that you have. And so it's it's not a one size fits all. It's one platform that gives every single person a unique journey that's relevant to their personal situation. And that's the key part. Advice and recommendations and tips about finance, it can't be general in nature. It's got to tell someone what they should do for their situation next. And that's the real critical, critical part uh, that we do differently to others. And that's worth talking about the legislative structure that you work within, right? Because essentially you are providing advice and it's specific advice. So that, are there things that you have to do and not do because of that? Yeah, so we are licensed. So we've got our own Australian financial services license. And this is going to go down some sort of geek hole here as we talk through this stuff. <laughs> but it's, it's the same sort of legislation and compliance regime that a traditional face-to-face -face advisor has to meet. We go through the exact same process. We have external counsel that sign off on what we do. We do audits. We produce a statement of advice. That's the legal document that contains all the advice. Um, the great thing for us and our, our clients is that they get all that on the screen, but they can download that uh, PDF version of a statement of advice. So we meet all the legislation requirements that a traditional face-to-face -face advisor does. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the old legal tail wags the dog, if I can use that term, in, in how the, the client goes through the journey. Um, but we try and make it as simple as possible and as intuitive as possible for people to, to go through and start building out their personal plans. And I guess um, if you go back uh, in history in Australia, financial advice got a really you know, bad mark, predominantly because a lot of the advice that was being given was more about, well, can we say this, you know, financing the lifestyle of the advisors rather than actually what was best for the client. So, so firstly, there's now the, the best advice bit, but also your economic model is rather different from many others. Yeah, so, so the unfortunate thing is, historically, there was too much focus on selling of products. And that's how advisors were paid uh, for, for their knowledge and advice and so forth. That's now changing quite significantly, and people are moving towards a, a fee for service. And, and unfortunately, that fee averages around about $5,000, maybe down to $3,000. Um, but what we want to do is, is we wanted to turn that on its head and basically turn advice into a subscription service. That's always there and will always reflect your current personal situation, regardless of when you come back and check in. Um, and we can do that because we gather data from true and trusted sources like feeds from bank accounts or, or their financial services firms. Um, but the real difference being then is that because it's a subscription service and for less than the price of a coffee a, a week, it's $12 a month or 120 bucks a year. But we can now enable people to have not just a moment in time to get their advice, but ongoing. It's basically a living plan that's always going to reflect their current situation. And in our model, um, when we do go down the path and we recommend products or suggest a certain product, we don't take any fees from those. And if there are fees, you know, we'll take them, but we're going to give 100% of those referral fees or whatever it may be directly back to the client. Um, and that's what we're going to be working on in the future, doing those sort of things for them. But we'll only, the only revenue we'll ever get is that subscription model. And that's uh, pretty innovative. I don't think I've heard of a similar model in Australia before, and I'm not sure I've seen it overseas before. So you, you, you are breaking new ground here. Yeah, as far as we know, um, we're probably, we are the only organisation in Australia and, and globally that we've done our research on them, what I'm trying to find, that is holistic in its approach and doesn't focus on selling products. The product itself is the next steps, the advice. What do I do next with my money? And for a lot of the situation, it's about optimizing what you currently have. It's not about a new product. It's just about allocating your cash in the right place so that you can get the outcomes or get closer to the outcomes that you're seeking. You don't need a new product most of the time to do that. And when you do, because you save money, we'll let you know. <laughs> exactly right. And, you know, this isn't a product sale. This is effectively a service which allows you to get more control about what you're doing and what you want to do. And I also like the idea that it's a dynamic thing that, you know, is updated and can be changed and, and morphed as, as, you know, you go through different life stages or different events, et cetera, et cetera. Because, of course, a financial plan, if, you, if you're going to pay a large amount for it at a point in time, it's out of date the day after. Yeah, and, and so that's, that's where it's a little bit unique as well. The digital channels allow you to do 
do things a bit more dynamically. And so we get data from one of three sources. Uh, the client just declares information, so they input the information, and they've got to come back and update that for the plan to change. Um, they can also link data from their financial institutions. So it's a mixture of open banking data in Australia and, and the screen scraping, and, and as that goes through, that'll all get open banking. Or when we work with the financial services firms, we integrate with their CRM. So the information they know about the client's already integrated into their plan. So the great thing is if you've linked the data in your accounts, the 2AM, for example, every day, we'll update all that. And so no matter when you come back, it's going to reflect your current situation. But it also allows us to go a step further. And this is the sort of stuff that we're developing. It can be like, hey, Martin, great news. You got paid yesterday. We noticed there was 400 bucks left in your account. Why don't you take 300 of that and put that into your super fund or pay for your credit card or into your offset for your home loan or whatever is relevant for you? The other 100 bucks, have fun with your family and friends. So you become that real-time financial advisor or financial coach for someone that's based on their exact situation. Right. And I think that concept of a financial coach is a really valuable one because certainly in my surveys, people's understanding of financial matters um, is relatively low. And of course, they're also blooming busy doing everything else. <laughs> you know, having somebody that's a little bit um, naggy on the side, just saying, hey, have you thought about this? Um, sounds a pretty powerful proposition. Yeah. And then, and then as their situation changes in our platform, you get one piece of data changes, all the advice and recommendations, tips, update. But also when the government fiddles with the legislation and so forth, those changes will impact certain people. So we then send nudges just to remind them, say, hey, a change has happened. You should look at doing this now. Um, and it's far better than having to go to the old Uncle Joe at the barbecue to get some advice about how you should manage your money. <laughs> yes, good old Uncle Joe. Now, a yeah. um, little bit of more about you, Paul, and your background. Um, you know, you, you, you're coming, you, you've, you've basically developed this proposition. Um, where did you come from and, and how did you get to this point of realisation that this was a really critical thing? Yes, yeah, so this is the third business that I've started. Um, I've lived and worked all over the place. I lived in, worked in Kenya in the mid-90s and then back to Sydney, then Malaysia, then Singapore for seven years. And, and then at the end of the business we had in Singapore, um, I started getting into wealth management. I came back to Australia in 2005 um, and worked for a small accounting firm, uh, being a financial advisor. The real mums and dads, uh, sort of the sort of people helping them navigate the, the, the maze of personal finance. And then went off and worked with Perpetual, looking after the mass affluent, probably people up to about $5 million, maybe a bit more of net worth. Um, and then Credit Suisse as a private banker. We we're literally looking after the, the AFR rich list. Um, so I've sat across the table um, of every single type of client uh, in this country. And for me, in a country like Australia, every single person should be able to access the information they need when they need it to make a well-informed financial decision. And that's what we wanted. That's that's why we built uh, um, the platform uh, to empower more people to take charge of their finances. Because fundamentally, we believe Australia is going to be better off when you're better off. So let's give you the tools to ensure that you can be better off. Yeah, absolutely. And um, just one other question which uh, sort of comes to mind. What about the superannuation element? Is that within the ambit of the platform too? Yeah, so we look at in the retire and investment sort of section, we, we ask if you've got any investments, but then we really focus on super. So we go through and we help you set your goals. You know, when do you want to retire? Um, how much you want to retire on? We give little nudges there, um, grayed out figures to give people the averages. Um, but then we ask them, what's your super fund? And so we've got the ability, you know, we've got digital version of all the product disclosure statements. That's all the information about the super funds for industry and retail funds. Someone types in, yes, I'm in with Aussie Super, for example, the biggest one in the country. Let me ask them, what's your investment option that you've got? Most people have got one. Yes, I'm in conservative balance or whatever it may be. We then go through and say, well, how can we improve the income output of your retirement? So a nice little graph that shows you all your income while you're working, then when you retire. We give advice around making extra contributions from your salary and showing the tax benefits that that happens and the longevity and what that does to, to increase the income by five years in your superannuation. The next things that can impact the longevity of your super and the income in retirement is the investment options. So we look at that and we, we look at how can we optimize the investment option. And so we look at this where you currently are. Is there a better investment option with a similar risk profile that has the propensity to give you a better return. We compare fees and historical returns. Then we also go through and say, well, look, inside super, you can actually have life insurance, income protection, um, and TPD, um, total permanent disability. 
So let's give you, let's discover what you currently have. Because if you're over 25 and you've got super, you've got default cover. Work out how much you should have and then let you know how you can go about fulfilling that need inside your super fund, how much more that's going to cost and what that will take out of your super over time. So it's, it really is automated advice just by adding those two bits of information. What's your super fund and what's your investment option? And we can tell you how to optimize your current super fund. Yeah, and again, my surveys show a lot of people really don't know much about the super fund that they're invested in. <laughs> you know, they yeah. might even they might even not know what, what category they're in, nor or indeed what the uh, fund itself is invested in, or what the fees are. Yeah, exactly. And then, and discovering that can just it gets people more engaged. It's like, whoa, you mean I'm paying one point two percent? Here's an alternative that pays 03 percent on fees. Yeah, let me switch over to that. Cool. Then we basically say, well, pick up the phone. Here's the phone number for your super fund. Call them and have this conversation. Make that change. So try and make it as easy as possible for people to take the next steps. Mm. And it's this empowerment that I, I think is really important. And you know, and it's empowerment thanks to digital, empowerment thanks to the data that you've been able to put together and the algorithms that drive it. Um, but also, it's the intent, and I, and I really like the intent here of helping people make better decisions. You know, this is a bit what DFA does. We try to share information about the financial uh, markets and everything else so that people can make better decisions. Or rather than actually disempowering people, you actually are empowering people. Yeah, you want to put them in charge um, because it is intimidating, as you said earlier, when you sit down with an advisor and they've got all the power. So let's start. And, and as you go through the process of self-discovery, of, of building out your plan and putting the information in, your, your levels of financial literacy are starting to increase because you can see that one little change of a goal or an action, how that's going to impact short, medium, and long-term on your financial health. We even highlight to someone saying, well, look, if you follow this advice between now and retirement, you're going to be better off by hundreds of thousands of dollars. The average person is better off by about $485,000 uh, who's using the platform now, between where they are now and to retirement. Um, and so it's about that empowerment. And, and regardless of your financial situation, if someone shows you the next steps, and the step after that and step after that to make things better, even if it's 100 steps, your stress levels go down. And, and that's what we want to do. There's, there's a social good to giving advice. And, and the vast majority of advisors, if not all of them, they're in there because they genuinely want to help people. Um, all we want to do is we want to take price away from being the impediment for people getting the information and be able to help themselves. So, Paul, one question I had was, um, what do you think the rest of the advice industry will, will say to this? Because in a way, you are challenging their value, value proposition. Yeah, look, we, some people think that we're, we're here to replace them. Uh, I don't believe we are. We're actually here to, to widen the, the scope of, of the population that's actually receiving advice. It can almost look as like we're incubating future clients for face-to-face -face advisors. Now, a lot of the comments we hear around the use of digital advice is that advice, well, you have to have a human involved um, it's, it's so much better when you do. And, and you know what? It, they're probably right. And the, the, when you actually can sit down with someone and talk through the process and so forth, you're going to, to have a deeper relationship with someone. But the fact is, as soon as you get a human advisor involved, the costs go up. And that's why advice is out of reach. So with our platform, you can have all these individuals starting to get advice. And when we work with advice practices or financial services firms, you can have a call to action where they can reach out to an advisor if they wish, knowing full well they're going to have to pay some extra money to engage a human being. But in the meantime, there's eight and a half million households that can't get advice. That's what Ativo is for, to give access to those people. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because a relatively small proportion of the adult population currently have advice, have a financial plan. And uh, certainly my research, and I suspect yours too, shows that those who have a plan actually have better outcomes. Yeah, their financial stress is a lot better. They, their retirement is significantly better. Um, and they reach their goals a lot faster. So we know the value of advice. Let's just get it in front of more people. Um, and that's what our goal is. And eventually, those that can afford it, they will want to see people. Um, and, and they can uh, they, they can do that when they've got the capital to be able to pay for it. Right. And now, if people want to find out more about the platform and the service, where do they go? Um, just otivo.com, O-T-I-V-O.com. Um, you can sign up, you get seven day free trial, um, have a play. If you don't like it, cancel it, you won't be charged. Um, so yeah, you can go and get on there and, and, and have a play around with it. Terrific. Well, I appreciate your time today, Paul. A very important conversation, this, and um, maybe we'll come back and have another chat later in terms of some of the insights that you've drawn from people who are already on the platform. But 
just as we close, how many people have you got signed up so far? Yes, there's about 6,000 people using the platform. Um, historically, we've been working with large employers, the likes of Ernst & Young, Rio Tinto, and, and even government departments like Oztrack, uh, using it to help their staff improve their financial wellbeing. And now we're starting to work with financial services firms and now just launched where individuals can access it as well. So it's, uh, it's there for people to use and improve their financial uh, wellbeing. Right. And so the point to underscore, this has been around for a little while. You know, it is being used. It's actually live now. Um, and uh, now you're extending the reach to the consumer end of the uh, spectrum. Yeah. Like we said earlier, Australia's going to be better off and you're better off. So our goal is to be the largest provider of advice in this country. Great aspiration. Thank you very much for your time today, Paul. Appreciate it. Cheers, man.